Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Starlight's Mate 39. Today, coming at you with the Gemini Jets 1 for 100 scale KLM Boeing 787 9. Uh, so, this aircraft will be operating to my San Francisco uh, model airport. Um, that's the main model airport, and you know, that's kind of the main goal for this aircraft um, in my collection. I have been needing like KLM aircraft in general. I legitimately have no KLM aircraft, um, so I definitely was needing it. It was kind of, an, it was kind of a necessity. Uh, so yes, this will be the third review out of the Christmas models, um, the third and last review. Um, once again, if you would like me to make an American Eagle uh, 140, ERJ-145 review, then just leave that down in the comment, uh, and I'll try to get that out for you guys. But anyways, um, let's jump straight into this review. Um, so yes, this is obviously in the new KLM livery. Um, I will talk about Gemini Jets and Phoenix at the end, and their Dreamliner molds, etc., uh, stuff like that. But for now, let's take a look into this model. So you have Gemini, well, we have the Gemini Jets box. Uh, we have the KLM um, aircraft 2D picture there. Gemini Jets, KLM, uh, Boeing 787-9 there. one hundred scale die-cast model aircraft. Inside we do have some details as usual. This is the standard um, stuff that Gemini normally does um, with their aircraft. So you can just um, pause the video if you'd like to read some details about it. Um, moving on with the sides of the box. We have Boeing 787-9 there. Uh, there's the other side, there's that side. Um, the box for this is certainly very compact, so all the Dreamliner boxes by both Phoenix and Gemini are pretty compact, pretty small boxes, so that's pretty good. As real as it gets, Gemini Jets and me of the aircraft there taken off. Uh, so yes, now we'll move on with the review here. So let me just get this like that. And yeah, we'll take a look into the model. So we have Air France KLM written on the front. We have that beautiful Dreamliner nose. Um, I do have to say, this is probably one of the most, like, best noses. I mean, out of all the Dreamliners, or, sorry, out of all the aircraft that there are, um, I'd probably say that the Dreamliner has the best nose. Um, we have the K, well, not the KLM, we have the cockpit there, um, cockpit windows. We have Air France KLM, like I said. We have uh, the Sky Team logo between the L1 door and the cockpit. Um, we have that kind of descent. Um, as part of that blue line, you can see it descends and then goes up, so that's where that starts. Um, then we have the KLM World Dutch Airlines logo there. Um, this is, I think this is the business class um, for the KLM aircraft. Um, we have that standard KLM blue livery uh, going along the aircraft. We have that first antenna on the top, satellite box there, L2 door. That is another SkyTeam logo there on the L2 door. Then I'll just get an overhead view of the wings. Zoom out here a bit. There we go. That's the overhead view, that's a bird's eye view of the wings there, the beautiful Dreamliner wings. Uh, really can't go wrong with them. Um, just get a view of the wing tips there. So yes, that is the entire Dreamliner wing right there. Um, we have Moving on, we have those GE NX um, engines. We have KLM written on them as well. Sadly, those are just painted white. Um, I mean, technically that is part of the KLM livery. You know, they have this just blue and white um, kind of livery that's... I mean, compared to other carriers, I must say, KLM's kind of done something different here where they've... Um, instead of having the main, you know, main, most of the fuselage, um, painted white and then maybe have the KLM logo written, uh, in blue like they have on the tail over there, um, instead they've done vice versa and then they've just painted most of the fuselage in blue and then they just have the KLM titles in white. So that's definitely something different. Um, that's definitely something that kind of, I guess more airlines should be doing technically, um, instead of the standard white fuselage and having something a little bit more basic, uh, compared to this. And then we have the L3 door there. Uh, move on to the landing gear and the underbelly later. And then we have the registration. Um, Papa, what is that? Oh yeah, PH-BHA. And then we have the Netherlands and European flags there. Um, we have the Flying Dutchman written on or below that. Um, we have that final antenna on the top of the aircraft. Um, I will go to the KLM tail after this. There we go. We can see if we just lift this up a bit. There's the antenna on the bottom of the aircraft. And then moving on with the final cabin door, and then there is the KLM tail. So, um, the KLM tail, I mean, I must say, overall, the livery of this is pretty good. Um, I do like the new KLM livery compared to their older one. I think the revised colors just look a little bit more better, a little bit more freshened up, um, which is obviously the aim of it. So, yes, uh, I think they've done, you know, I think, I think it's a success, pretty much. And moving on with the underbelly of the aircraft. Um, these don't tilt, I don't believe. Yeah, these don't tilt. Um, they are rolling landing gear, however. I think you do have to kind of shake them up a bit to get them rolling. But, um, anyways, that is the rolling landing gear there. We have the main landing gear. We have that hole punch uh, for the stand. We have Gemini Jets written there. 
Um, we have the clean white underbelly um, compared to the all blue uh, fuselage. We have that registration again on the right, um, more GENX engines, so here's the view from there. Um, and then we have those horizontal stabilizers over there. There's that antenna, a um, couple of cargo doors or baggage doors, um, and then we have the front landing gear there. So that is everything. Um, I think Gemini overall, they've done a pretty nice job on this. Um, just looking at this aircraft, I must say the KLM livery just looks, you know, pretty clean, pretty, pretty good um, overall. I'm certainly a fan of it. Um, and it, you know, from my first KLM aircraft that I have in my collection, it's certainly a good choice. Um, I would say that if you're taking a look at getting, you know, a good wide body, uh, maybe something that's not exactly, oh my god, you know, $50 A380, um, this would probably be maybe a little bit more to your speed. Um, I would say that this aircraft might be selling out, might not be, not really sure. Um, Phoenix did release this aircraft as well, I'm pretty sure. Um, so instead I decided to go with the Gemini Jets 1 to um, kind of vary it up with the models that I got, since I already have two Phoenix wide bodies. But, um... Yeah, overall, that's about it for me, guys. Um, so, yes, I would say, compared to Phoenix, um, I think it all depends on the livery. I would say that the mold in general um, from, from both companies basically looks really good. Um, and I would say just, like, looking at this aircraft right now, it does look really nice. So, um, I would definitely 100% recommend it from, you know, both um, manufacturers. I haven't, I mean, I only have one Phoenix Dreamliner, and I... That's the Virgin Atlantic 789. I think I got a comment about that saying that the coloring of that aircraft wasn't exactly 100%, um, you know, correct. Um, so maybe it kind of depends on the livery, you know. Maybe that's really the only difference um, on the Dreamliners between Gemini and Phoenix. Um, you know, maybe it's just the liveries and which ones that, you know, they can really perfect and which shade of blue uh, is perfect for the KLM livery, for example. So, um, but yeah, I would say if you're looking to get this aircraft, um, you know, you have some kind of slight interest in it, not exactly 100%, I would say go for it. Um, overall, it is a beautiful model, um, and you will be seeing this in the San Francisco airport. Um, at the moment, this aircraft isn't in service to the U.S., or I, well, I don't think it's in service to the U.S. at all, but I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, I do know that this aircraft will be flying to San Francisco in the future, so that's why I've been mentioning it. At the moment, they don't fly it there yet, but, um, yeah, when they do, obviously, this aircraft will be in there, um, uh, in my model airport. So, yes, um, that's about it for me, guys. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to the channel, um, and follow me on Instagram for the latest. Thanks very much. See you guys in the next one.